Hey guys, um, today uh, it's gonna be uh, extremely geeky and we're gonna uh, get technical. So uh, before we begin, uh, I wanted to ask you a question. How many of you guys do technical SEO like on a daily basis? Okay. That's really nice. Uh, I was expecting less, so I'm very happy <laughs> because it's gonna get uh, technical. And um, I wanted to start with with uh, this like very popular saying that SEO is dead. And today I wanna touch on that a lot because it's actually dead in the way that we did it a couple of years ago. And uh, we enter like the era of technical SEO. And I was told by, by my friend uh, from friends that if you wanna get any attention from guys in France, just show them the case studies first. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I was told you're very like hands-on. So uh, with technical SEO, we've managed to help uh, quite a lot of um, large websites all around the world uh, to improve their visibility a lot. And technical SEO is one of the uh, one of the the, the cheapest. A way to improve your traffic if your website is large. And sometimes you're lucky enough to get 800% growth in 24 countries within one month in a coupon niche. But <laughs> well, that's what actually I was worried about. If you read a lot of articles about mobile first and all those new things that are coming, mm, there would be some of the articles that would pop up that SEO is just makeup or whatever. So I was wondering, is, is, is technical SEO the future? So is that something you should focus on right now or you should just go to mobile or PWAs or whatever? And last year I spent a lot of time, sometimes I think that was a little bit too much, um, investigating this topic. And I've got one extremely interesting finding is that in most niches, that's how your learning curve looks like. So at the very beginning, you're clueless, <laughs> then you've got this moment when like, I know everything just to find out you're uh, not there yet. But that's everywhere but SEO niche. And that's how it looks like for technical SEOs. That's time, that's your knowledge, how smart you think you are. It goes like that. <laughs> so the more I dig in, um, I'm probably f I probably feel like I know less than I knew five years ago. And that's one of the most interesting things, and I'm going to touch on that today. If you don't understand any of the parts, I'm trying to <coughs> explain them well, but if you don't, there are links, or you can reach out to me, or you can, you can investigate that later on. But I was, I'm going to try to touch on as many topics uh, I'm working with as possible, just to give you an overview. And... Uh, Most of my time uh, revolves, I'm like in a very good situation with my agency. Uh, I'm the one who gets to do the research. I don't, want, don't work with client, uh, clients that much. And I find new problems in technical SEO niche every single month. And that led me to believe that most of the technical SEO we do right now uh, is just touching the tip of an iceberg. And this is the problem that we face. So our key problem right now is that most of our knowledge comes from either Google Announcements, uh, Google Patents, or Google Webmaster Central, so Google Blog. And this is not a very, like, of course, all of, those are, all of these are important and awesome, but this is not nearly enough to what we should do. And after more research, like, I figured, okay, we need to widen our research even more. And especially um, with the pace of changes that happened over the last couple of years, especially last year uh, or last two years were extremely uh, dynamic. And it was never as dynamic as it is right now. And um, you, can, you can see on the slide that probably some of the uh, turn points um, already happened, but we are in, in the era of change. And as SEOs, and just to finish this introduction, uh, as SEOs, we tend to get a little bit too close to what we do. So every single one of us, including myself, uh, sometimes it's so close to your client, your project, to your reporting or whatever, that you somehow don't look at the big picture. And it's often much more complex if you 
like leave your comfort zone of just SEO and look beyond that. And in 2012, 2013, 14, whatever, with SEO you had that problem, okay, you wanna launch a new website. So all you had to do uh, was like pick a Drupal platform or WordPress and there would be hundreds of presentations, like which one should you pick? Um, but those times are long gone and they're not coming back anymore. But right now, shit got really complex. Um, that's Mandala, by the way, I was just, yeah, so, um, so, that's actually my topic that I, I talk a lot. I talk about a lot, but with launching a new website, you're probably at some point gonna come across JavaScript and JavaScript frameworks. And don't be afraid. I'm just gonna try to get you through that. Um, how many of you are doing JavaScript SEO right now? Oh, that's also better than expected. So I'm very happy to 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 see that. So you're gonna be. You're in for a treat. <laughs> uh, so with all of the websites, it, it, regardless of if it's JavaScript or not, uh, you come across the problem that we didn't ever have. So is it gonna rank well in Google? You didn't have this problem with Drupal or WordPress, even though there were people saying, okay, WordPress is better or whatever. This is a different kind of problem. Is it indexable? How about the crawler budget? So some of the frameworks or solutions today will deplete, kill, or whatever, nuke your crawler budget completely. And how about different search engines? Because uh, f right now, like every single search engine is gonna look at things differently. And it's not a huge problem in France, I guess, but if you work with US clients with just, um, you, you can lose up to 40% of traffic. So let me try to explain uh, quickly and briefly uh, the problem with JavaScript for technical SEO. And Google and JavaScript um, always had a very complex uh, relationship. Um, Google is one of the creators of Angular, and at the same time, um, Google is one of the biggest advocates, I think you can say, for a lot of JavaScript-rich technologies like PWAs, like, again, Angular, and so on. So at the same time, there, is, there are so many shades of JavaScript, there are so many different frameworks or configurations that it's extremely complex compared to any other uh, solutions we, we were dealing with before. And let me tell you why it's complicated. With HTML, that's a cake comparison, so every, anyone who likes cake is gonna love it, I guess. Uh, with HTML, uh, if Googlebot is gonna visit your site, it's getting like ready to go, uh, ready to consume or crawl or index uh, code, so a fully baked or prepared cake. With JavaScript, shit is getting really complex because Googlebot has to go through JavaScript, uh, JavaScript files, HTML files, CSS files, and process them all to see the final version of your website. So it's not really just by looking at code, mm, uh, like with HTML, if you would look at code, you would see all the content. It's not really like that. So all the ingredients have to be processed into the final product. And this is the problem because it's expensive. It takes a lot of computing power, it takes a lot of resources, and that's why it affects your crawler budget, your indexing, and your rankings. And last but not least, uh, JavaScript is not as forgiving as HTML. So with HTML, I did a little bit of testing, and uh, I, if you really write like extremely shit code, open that HTML code, open that in Chrome, you will see it's all nicely fixed. So Chrome is gonna fix your code even if you, like, <laughs> you would be surprised uh, how good they, they are at fixing that. With JavaScript, some of the minor issues can completely kill your website. Uh, and looking at the history of that, it has all started with uh, this article, and my research started with this article in 2015, where Google said that they are no longer, they don't, don't no longer need uh, Ajax scrolling scheme. And for me, it was magic, like, what are you talking about? And they re reached out to a lot of developers, a lot of SEOs, and everyone was like, yeah, I know what this article is about. <laughs> but after a couple of questions, um, it wasn't really like that. So I think it was one of the most misunderstood articles in 2015. Uh, 
at the same time, it was a little bit confusing because uh, they mentioned uh, what was um, a basis for a lot of failure for a lot of websites that they are able to render and understand um, pages like modern browsers. And I would like to <laughs> ask you, can this backfire? Like, can you see this short quote, which I was emailed by my client's developer a lot of times, can you see this going south quickly? I can show you one of the examples, but over my uh, work I probably saw uh, tens, maybe if not hundreds of those. Uh, so my favorite case study, probably some of you may, may saw that, mm, but this is like an extreme fail. Um, Hulu.com, so the biggest competitor of Netflix, I think they're equally big in the States, figures, okay, we're gonna launch a JavaScript website and it's gonna be fine. And if you see the, if you work with search metrics, if you, if you see the scale of their visibility, that they've lost millions of visits per day. It was 40% uh, drop over a couple of days or a couple of weeks. They were one of the biggest losers, actually the biggest loser in, in the world. Um, and if you see how much they, is that a pointer? How much they, um, uh, like how much above are they are like from other losers it's like it's really massive and the key thing is that they didn't even drop they were completely wiped out of google uh, google's traffic so if you watch south park uh, like i do sometimes and they would go 97 positions down and all of these shows that people would usually watch on hulu they couldn't find it anymore and so they had to switch to something else and if you want to read more about that, that's a pretty old case study, it's like a year old. <laughs> so yeah, in, in this, uh, yeah. Um, but anyways, um, just so you know, for all of you, but I'm guessing there is not many, but if you're still not convinced that this is something you should care about, most of big players already moved towards cl uh, client render JavaScript or some kind of uh, JavaScript frameworks. Um, uh, I will touch on YouTube, which is not here, but I think that YouTube is one of the biggest client rendered JavaScript website uh, websites out there. Of course, Google, Facebook, Netflix, w Facebook with React and hundreds of other websites. So it's like a silent revolution in SEO community, but you will see websites that uh, have this problem sooner or later. And let's focus on the biggest frameworks. <coughs> One of the biggest frameworks out there, I think right now, uh, looking at the statistics, would be React, which is like much bigger than, like much more popular than any other. Actually, for all the purists out there, React is a library, but let's make our life simpler. simple. So there are three biggest frameworks, Vue, Angular, and React. Angular is supported by Google. Uh, React is supported by Facebook. So these are like big players like competing on this field. But, there is a lot of notable frameworks as well. Uh, and there is a rest of the pack of semi-notable frameworks, but this is not even 50% of the frameworks out there. So it's getting really complicated and everyone wants to have uh, its, um, like most of the companies invest in some kind of framework recently. But the key question for now is are they okay for SEO? We don't need to know all the differences. We don't need to dwell into details as much if they're okay for SEO. And if you reach out to people who actually create those, these frameworks and work on them, uh, like Jeff Wellplay from Angular, they will often say that if you care about, I don't know how, how far can I go uh, before it explodes, but if you care about SEO, you still need to have ser ser server rendered content. And this is about uh, at Angular conference. And you see that if someone who's a creator of the framework or co-creator is telling that, and your client's developers would be, we don't need to do that. <laughs> Those are uh, some things we can use uh, to, its, um, to, to help us out with, uh, with working with that website. Um, but at the same time, there is one statement from Google that's completely on the other end of the, of the, on the scale. So uh, they are, then the word generally should be like in red and flashy red here, able to render and understand your model, modern pages like modern browser. Uh, so I think we should 
kind of stop here for a second and think, okay, which way should we go? Because you will get, uh, you will get one of these quotes <laughs> when working with your clients and because developers are gonna Google that, is, go is JavaScript indexable? And they will send you uh, this and you at the same time will send them this and this is gonna be just back and forward. And this is where we enter a little bit of chaos in communication and you need to prepare, there's gonna be a lot of chaos here and with all my research that I do, it's normal when something is growing as quickly as the technologies right now. So anyone, everyone wants to be first, Google versus Facebook and Hulu versus Netflix and so on. So we can expect more and more chaos coming because it's growing so fast. It's impossible to do that in a, in a gentle way. But if you ever talk to your developers or you ever talk to your clients about those quotes I just showed you, there is an important distinction, one of the most important ones you can ever make, and this is a bulletproof argument here. So we need to divide two key concepts, which is indexing versus ranking. So we can totally agree here, and after all the experiments, uh, my endless bugging of Googlers, so some of them probably will uh, give me a restraining order, order at some point, but I talk to a lot of Googlers, I email them all the time, to their private email sometimes, I'm sorry, Ilya, <laughs> but, um, and they will give me a lot of feedback, and we can make any framework indexable with their help. Like, they do a very good job with that, and um, you can, I, I will link to, to, to articles explaining that. So we know Google can, Google, just Google, can index most, actually all of the frameworks, if done well. There are certain steps to do that. But, it doesn't mean that they're gonna rank. So the key question here is can you rank with a JavaScript website? And this is something we should talk about with our clients or developers because indexing versus ranking, rankings are two different things. And even indexing has issues which we're gonna touch on. So as most of the Googlers would say, mm, this is one of the most popular reply I get, there are different factors at, at play here. And <laughs> Uh, so, um, see, now the whole presentation is ruined because of you. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> but, um, if you uh, look at Hulu.com again, um, we can search for shows that are only available on Hulu. Like South Park, you can watch in many different places, but there, there are shows that you can only watch on Hulu, so it's in Google's best interest to let you find them. Because if you have a favorite show and you can find it in Google, that's like, searching for something in Bing. Um, so, if you go and search for difficult people, which is a Hulu uh, show, and you use the, the, the best keyword came, that came to my mind, watch difficult people online, Hulu is number two under what I think is a torrent website. Um, Naruto, also an exclusive show that you can only watch on Hulu.com. Uh, Crunchyroll, and then torrent websites. Uh, casual, um, show I actually watch on Hulu sometimes. Um, also, you, you won't find it uh, in Google. So that's something that you, you can see a huge problem here because there are millions of people in the States looking for those shows at Hulu because you can't find them anywhere else that you can't find. So that's a very cool example. Those pages are usually indexed, but they are not ranking even though there's a huge player. And to uh, show you even show you that, that even deeper problem with actually hulu.com only if you co copy any of the paste uh, any of if you copy any of the content from their website um, and search for that in google uh, you won't find hulu.com again so so even for such a <laughs> uh, long tail long 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 time queries like their own content they won't rank uh, so I think what we need to look at that right now the biggest uh, like the biggest race uh, between uh, some of the titans, some of the biggest players is on the field of on SEO. And we knew that for a while, but right now this is also uh, something that they do with use of the best modern technologies, expensive technologies out there. And this is one of my um, favorite examples showing some of the problems that you may encounter. So Vimeo and YouTube are both JavaScript uh, client-side rendered 
that's a long mouthful, client side, client side rendered uh, JavaScript websites. I should be better with that after so much, but yeah. Uh, so anyways, that's the visibility for Vimeo on top and on the bottom you see youtube.com and as you can see Vimeo has a very bad trend over the last uh, five years. Mm, YouTube had some problems but at the same time they're just going up. And we should look into why is their visibility going down. So if we open vimeo.com and switch off our JavaScript, Mm, we can see that the website is basically empty. How much time do I have? It says I'm talking for 45 minutes. Yep, you've had, uh, 20 so far, 22. I was uh, 45? Okay, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> and yeah, time flies, flies fast. So, uh, so that's Vimeo's homepage without JavaScript. And you can see that this is probably related to their problem that Google is not picking up all, the, all of the content. So if you think about that for a while, uh, I will tell you about YouTube, I probably spoiled, spilled the beans already, but uh, YouTube secret no one ever told you. That's the worst clickbait ever. So YouTube is a client, I probably shouldn't have said that before, but YouTube is a client rendered JavaScript website. And if you look at uh, YouTube with JavaScript disabled, this is what you get. This is a very non-interactive white uh, website. And, which is really interesting, they rank well instead of that because they're pre-rendering for Googlebot. And let me quickly understand, who, know, who of you doesn't know what pre okay, who of you know what pre-rendering is? That's also very nice. You guys are good technical SEOs in France. Anyways, um, pre-rendering means that there is a service that goes and looks at this JavaScript and bakes that cake for Google. <laughs> so uh, processes all the and renders all the JavaScript into HTML and serves just HTML or CSS, just raw HTML to, uh, to Google. Probably the best explanation out there, but you know what I mean. Uh, so the question is, why would YouTube do that if they're so good with processing JavaScript? They do that because YouTube wouldn't rank well. So that's a very simple uh, explanation here. Uh, and coming back to uh, one of my favorite fights, as you can see, uh, favorite battles out there. So Hulu versus Netflix. Uh, and if you ever watch American like fight movies, it's a very even fight. So you can see no one is clearly winning. But recently, just recently, and it's like that for the last seven years or so, um, Recently, Netflix is taking over. And if we look at those two websites, and what I do here is I disable JavaScript with a plugin because I'm lazy and don't want to do that in the other way. Anyway, I disable JavaScript with a plugin. You can see the difference. So Netflix with JavaScript disabled, working. Uh, fairly, fairly good website. Probably you, I'm not sure if you're going to watch a movie there, but you, still, you can still send, see the content. And um, Netflix is one of the pioneers of uh, some of the technical solutions with React. They're very close with React framework and they do a lot of very cool shit with it. The, the, their shit is cool, in, uh, so cool that even Googlers show them as one of the best examples of um, how to deal with, with, with JavaScript framework. So that's Jake Archibald from Google, uh, Chrome, um, saying that this is really a good way to do that. So, it's not all that nice if you think, okay, they improved the performance by 50% by removing the JavaScript, blah, blah, but they, the, the case study was done for their homepage. If you ever open Netflix, it's just a huge image with two buttons. So that's probably not something you would do with your e-commerce website. So you need to take that with a grain of salt here. Uh, what they did exactly is Netflix removed React, so removed JavaScript framework from the front end, so basically from what you see when you open the browser. So they removed language switcher, um, buttons on the, top, on the bottom of the page, and client side log, log, login library. They, they just rewrote that, they just rewrote that with plain JavaScript. And this may seem like nothing, but this resulted 
in so all the headlines would be that they removed JavaScript, but they didn't. They just rewrote React with plain JavaScript. Uh, and this was just 300 of lines uh, of code that they wrote to remove 200 kilobytes of React uh, code from the front end. And this resulted in 50% performance improvement, which is cool. But you may see, you may think, okay, this is just 200 kilobytes. What's the problem with that? It's not worth uh, doing it. But the key problem with, with JavaScript and with performance here is that JavaScript is extremely expensive. It's, and I don't mean how much developers make per month, uh, which some of you may think of, but it's expensive for our machines and for Googlebot and for other search engines to process. So it's extremely expensive on our CPUs mostly. And JavaScript, we need to remember, it lives on our machines, on servers, and it's very expensive on the hardware or network. Uh, and even if you open some uh, some JavaScript rich websites, you will see um, a huge spike in your CPU usage on your desktop or your laptop, which is actually quite surprising. And how many of you own iPhone X here? Okay. Very bad example for this presentation. Uh, but... <laughs> If you own an iPhone X, I'm just talking to two people probably right now, um, it's completely different user experience than if you own a median phone. A median phone for um, for most of the users would be Motorola Moto G4. I have no idea how it looks like, but um, the Moto G4 takes around 1.6 seconds to process one megabyte of JavaScript when you won't see any delays like it's unnoticeable on your iPhone 8, iPhone X, or MacBook Pro, or any better device out there. So just to vis visualize that a little bit more, the Netflix example, they removed 200 kilobytes of JavaScript. And if we compare that to 20, 200 kilobytes of uh, like an image, processing an image is just split of a second. Processing that 200 kilobytes uh, of JavaScript is four seconds on a decent device. I won't dwell into details, but that's not gonna happen on an old phone. So, to leave the JavaScript topic for a second and like give you a second to brief here, uh, one more thing that I came out and that I found during my research is that at the CEOs, we're so, much, so focused on crawler budget, technical SEO, and all those things that we don't really know. And I ask that, of, of course not in France, but I ask that in a, on a different conference. And most people have no idea how, all the, uh, how the whole process of processing a website works. So um, you need to know that Googlebot is a browser too. So the Googlebot WRS, we can dwell into details, but that's a simplification here. Stay with me. So a new trend is emer uh, emerging here and something we should also think about when dealing with JavaScript or with performance. Uh, and how many of you have seen this screen? Seriously? Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> I was just, you don't use Photoshop in France? Or, so if you saw this screen um, ever, it's one of the most annoying things for me uh, you, you, can, you can think of because um, it's, it takes so, load, uh, so, so long just to show you a screen of just, I think those people should be penalized. Like they, are just, they shouldn't even sign that. So like we created this screen. But anyways, um, stuff you can do uh, while Photoshop loads uh, is you can le learn to pronounce uh, LF8, which is our company. And um, you can trim your tone lines on a plane, which I saw once, uh, or you can do three, uh, 30 push-ups if you have better shape than, uh, than mine. Uh, but after that, you get only two possible interactions. So you can either open a file or create a new one. So you, were, you wait, I don't know how much, like 10, 30 seconds, just to have two possible actions. And I'm getting somewhere with that. Um, it looks like you have the full app launched, but you just have two features. 
And if you do that for Google, it may be a problem. So you shouldn't, and I'm gonna show you a comparison here. Um, a lot of websites is copying the same thing. So you have to wait for like 10 seconds before seeing anything that's actionable. How to do it right? And again, I'm coming back to my favorite example, Hulu versus Netflix. Um, if you look at those two uh, TV shows, so Stranger Things and Casual. Um, 10 minutes. Oh. <laughs> it's not gonna be done in 10 minutes, but speeding up. So, uh, one of them loads uh, Hulu in 20 seconds, one of them loads in 15 seconds. Uh, so, but the total page of the second one is 60 megabytes, which is like huge. So, uh, which website is faster? Like, it's very difficult to assess that by looking at these metrics because they're just so uh, last season. You shouldn't uh, consider either, either, either time to load or that's not really measure, something you, you should measure. So let's play a game between those two things, fully loaded versus time to interactive, which is a very interesting concept that Photoshop doesn't know about. Um, would you rather wait eight seconds for fully loaded website or wait two seconds for a piece of website you can interact with and then wait for 10 seconds for the rest? This is a concept we should really look into. Netflix um, is loading very quickly with time to interactive. If you have a look at Hulu, it's just 20 seconds to see anything that's actionable. And at the same, so first meaning, meaningful paint is 19 seconds and something that's just interactive in a little bit is 20 seconds. At the same time, that's how it looks like for Netflix. So there's a lot of new metrics we should, uh, we should look at while optimizing our websites. Uh, and this technology is available uh, ever since uh, PS4, <laughs> probably even earlier, but PS4, you could play a game while it would download the rest of the game, which is a fairly old console, if you ask me. But Googlebot isn't as patient as Photoshop users, and performance now is one of the metrics for, for example, getting a feature snippets, according to the research, or uh, getting a very good mobile traffic. So that's something you should look uh, into. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna go a little bit quicker <laughs> because the time is running, but um, going back to JavaScript, uh, it also affects the crawler demand or crawler budget, which we talked about before. And finally, after, like I went through a lot of experiments over the last year, but recently, just I think se six or seven days ago, uh, John Miller said that, you can, you can find that with, with this link, uh, that crawling and indexing is currently a bit slower than HTML. Because before that it was difficult to, to get that information. So, crawling and indexing is not a black and white thing here. There is a lot of factors affecting JavaScript crawling, like the way you place your, your JavaScript code affects crawling. Mm. And just so you know, again, JavaScript uh, comes in a very, like in a lot of flavors. There is a lot of different frameworks. And there, you can configure any single one of them in a different way. There are things like transpiling, which also affect mm, uh, crawling and indexing. You can put like inline or external and so on. On top of that, every single of those factors of those thing, uh, things like how you configure your website is gonna affect some of the uh, ranking factors we already, we already know. But if we look into search engines other than Google, and I'm gonna just go quicker through that because I was trying to speak slowly, <laughs> uh, advised by organizers, but um, there is a big thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, with Google, we're fairly well organized, and I think we sometimes don't appreciate that. With Bing, uh, there is different st statements, different reality. Uh, there is this guy at Popcorn, I'm gonna mention in a second, and there is our experiment. So all those show a little bit different data. Um, and Fabrice Cannell of Bing said that Bing can process JavaScript, which is cool. But if we look under Webmaster guidelines, um, they mentioned that JavaScript, they compare that in a way to Flash, which is quite uh, disturbing. 
Uh, so there is a problem of can process versus does process JavaScript. Mm, and we created a very simple experiment ab about that, but I think this is a better example here. If you go to angular.io, one of the biggest Angular websites I know, again, uh, copy any of the content from the website um, and try to find it in Bing. Uh, you will find everything but angular.io website. At the same time, uh, our experiment would show exactly the same. So we can clearly assume that Bing is getting there, but really slowly compared to, to Google. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. With um, help of my friend Dan Petrovich, um, I've managed to find the one website that is client-side rendered JavaScript and is indexed in, in Bing. I couldn't see the rankings because there's no visibility index for Bing, I know, uh, I know but that's uh, promising. DuckDuckGo, Yandex, and uh, most other website uh, search engines we reached out to are getting there, but again, very slowly. So you couldn't find any examples of a website that work well. And again, if you're in the States, you're kind of fucked. If you're in the UK, that's also a big problem because there's, you lose 20% of the traffic. Mm, in France, you only lose eight, so I leave that to you. <laughs> but if you want to read more about that, you can follow the link on the screen. And and looking closer at Google, <coughs> I think this is an example we can skip. Basically, uh, Angular.io um, had a problem where they de-index from, from Google for a good uh, chunk of time. And the only thing they uh, saw as a pattern was that all the links uh, with, uh, so, so basically all the, f like just going one folder down, all the, all the, the URLs would be indexed going two folders down, they would be completely de-indexed from, uh, from Google. And that's um, an issue uh, s submitted by and commented by Igor, Igor Minar, um, who is uh, a software engineer at Google and Googler at Google for the last eight years. So he said that Angular.io basically disappeared from Google for a couple of months because it's client-side rendered JavaScript. So you need to have that in mind because uh, and their visibility was also not that good. If you had an e-commerce store <laughs> that would be in the same position, uh, all the URLs with, like, let's say, all the shoes would be would be gone because of that. And I talked about that with some of the people, and I know they had some no-index problems as well. But again, uh, look into the GitHub issue if you like. I'm, I'm going to share the presentation later and consider that as a very good argument with your clients or developers. Also, um, partial indexing is one of the most interesting things I ever found. So you, have a, you can have a website in Google that's only half indexed. So if you go to pregender.io, uh, you can see that um, the content from their website, so looking at this content here, uh, isn't indexed in Google. At the same time, uh, if you search for the H1, you can find their website. So they're partially indexed in Google, which, some, which is something I never saw before, and we saw that for a couple of, uh, couple of websites. Um, so we come to the moment when like SEOs versus, versus developers versus search engines and frameworks creators, everyone has a little bit of like different view on how it works. And don't blame developers for that as well, because they're confused because of all the mixed data they're getting. Mm. And just to show you something at the end of the presentation, we've created something that will be remembered as the most, world most confusing survey for developers ever. It was only one question, uh, but proved to be the most difficult question you can ask your developer. Um, that's the question. Can client-side render JavaScript website rank high in Google? Two possible answers, yes and no, fairly straightforward. Uh, Node.js group, 35 to 7, no. Uh, React.js group, yes. <laughs> uh, Angular, they weren't that sure, so it was on the yes side a little bit. And the only group that was almost 100% sure was JavaScript group. So, uh, takeaways from that, um, Google is a little bit too close to their technology sometimes to see its flaws. Uh, developers are confused as fuck, which is true. And SEO is the only way to look at the big picture. And Facebook surveys don't do them <laughs> for anything. Um, so the solution here uh, is mm, 
we as SEO team, uh, and that's where I'm getting with this presentation, uh, and technical SEO, uh, we are the glue that holds it all, all together. Like we should be the ones who find out what's happening with uh, framework creators, search engines, and developers, and try to communicate them all uh, to deliver results. And um, how much time do we have? One minute. One minute. So we're gonna skip the Mintra case. Like it's, it's, uh, yeah. It just shows that you still can't rank with Google. Uh, sorry for that. Mm. I was going to. Slow Would I you guess. be able to? So. Ben, on a autre après. Quelqu'un d'autre. Du coup, on va vous pouvez euh, certainement télécharger le, les slides après. Euh, on est désolé de, de aller vite I, I, pour I... la fin, mais je pense que tout ça, c'est des informations compréhensibles en slide. Oh, I'm in the wrong language. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just hoping you're not offending me anyway, but that's fine. So anyways, that's, uh, that's the end. So one of the last examples, what well, last example I have today is Google Flights. You probably saw the noise about Google Flights recently. Um, and um, this is one of the most interesting case study I found because Google Flights is basically pushed by Google. And um, the thing is, if you uh, look at this website and you copy any of the content from their footer or anywhere, you will find just one result. And interestingly enough, if you copy that from English version, you will find French version <coughs> in English. And that's just one result for a page that has tens of thousands of URL. So, um, so you can see that Google Flights is a client-side rendered JavaScript website, which is completely de-indexed or completely um, broke, to use the nice word, uh, from SEO perspective. So, just to summarize that, JavaScript can kill your crawler budget. And it's probably going to happen. We saw that across a lot of websites. And JS websites have ranking problems, which makes ranking with a JavaScript website almost impossible. Um, so if you're about to launch a website, which is like a pizzeria, I wouldn't use React for that, but I'm almost done. Uh, <laughs> if you want to use any JavaScript framework, use one that's server-side rendered. So basically, the client gets HTML. You can get all the perks from the framework, uh, but for, uh, th that's a very interesting example. Knockout, we reached out to them or Twitter, which is inactive for the last two or three years. Uh, community is gone. Like, if you use Knockout and you want to do anything with it, there is no support here. So use one of the frameworks that has any support for for example, server-side rendering. Uh, and with technical, JavaScript is the future here. And right now, Google isn't perfect with that. But they work on a new WRS engine, which is most likely be based on Chrome 59, from what I gathered to squeeze out of Googlers. Um, they will do that better and faster. And they're the only ones who do that right now. And this should happen at the end of this year or the uh, beginning of 2019. Uh, if you want to get started with that and you didn't understand some of my uh, presentation today, you can go and follow this link. This is like the 60 pages guide to JavaScript SEO. And I think we should <laughs> wrap this up. Uh, but the key thing is that you can deliver very nice growth with technical SEO, with JavaScript SEO, but it's not only about those nice looking charts that I was asked to put in this presentation. It's also about reacting to changes, which is basically done uh, by investing your time now in JavaScript SEO. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.